next 20 years. Phyllis Bennis is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. She joins us live from Washington, D.C. Hi once again, Phyllis. So one year on people clearly struggling, so many still without homes. And uh, the U.N. Uh, uh, Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East is struggling to find funding, isn't it? It's struggling and it's losing the struggle so far. The amount of, of money in the humanitarian request from UNRWA is only, it's 70 percent unfunded. Only 30 percent of it has been funded. We're seeing an incredible uh, continuation of the war by other means. The siege of Gaza has tightened since the war. The estimates are that to rebuild Gaza, even over five years, would take about 445 trucks going in every day loaded with construction materials. The Israelis are allowing in, on average, 33 trucks a day. So it's simply impossible. Of the 12,500 homes that were completely destroyed, aside from the 100,000 that were terribly damaged, not one has been rebuilt. The equipment doesn't come in. The materials don't come in. The, the Israeli siege is so tight that people are simply unable to rebuild. Now, uh, a recent UN-sponsored report pointed to serious violations of international law on both sides. But has any real action been taken? Will any real action be taken against those responsible? This remains a very serious question. The most recent report, which came from the Human Rights Council, uh, indicated, as you say, that there had been uh, violations on both sides. But there was no question in the report that the vast majority and the most serious violations were committed by the Israeli forces. The disparity of power on the two sides made that inevitable. However, it was clear that the report was a very balanced report, did report uh, potential violations on the Palestinian side. And the solution, of course, is to bring those cases directly to the International Criminal Court, of which Palestine is now a full member. Israel, of course, has refused to join the court and has said it would not take seriously any report coming from the United Nations. It's very similar to earlier reports. The Goldstone report of the, the Gaza war in 2008-2009, also a report that included uh, a very balanced approach, where overwhelmingly the reporting is on the violations committed by the Israeli side because of the disproportionate power. Those violations include collective punishment of a civilian population, uh, the, the uh, use of prohibited weapons in populated areas, a whole range of violations of the Geneva Conventions. So far, Israel has retained the impunity given to it by the United States, which refuses to allow the United Nations to seriously hold Israel or Palestinians at some point responsible or accountable for those violations. They have simply been allowed to get away with it where the U.S. continues to provide not only the $3.1 billion in military aid that they start with every year, but additional military supplies, ammunition, weapons. Every time Israel assaults Gaza, the United States provides additional weapons, additional ammunition to allow that, that attack to go even further. It's not surprising that many in Gaza and around the world hold the United States as being accountable for those violations because of the uncritical support for Israel, the provision of yeah. weapons, uh, despite the knowledge of human rights violations. Phyllis, thank you very much. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Phyllis Bennis uh, joining us once again on Al Jazeera. Thank you. Well, the United Nations envoy in Yemen is uh, still pressing for a temporary ceasefire to allow much-needed aid into the country. More